All right, so we're gonna be doing a 500 hour service on a L90H loader, Volvo loader. Um, for this, this one has a automatic oil or greasing system. So I don't really have to do too much greasing except for some points that aren't, aren't um, actually hooked to the greasing system like the drive shaft I think is one that's not hooked to it that needs to be done and uh well that might be might be a few in other places uh I actually think that might be it there might be one on the rear three point uh system as well but so basically with this this is a 2018 so this needs a park regeneration done for the DPF system. Um, you can only enter it within 50 within 50 hours of the 500 hour service interval. So if if you're not between like 450 to 550 then you won't be able to enter it through your dash. You have to have a um, tech tool and do a service regeneration. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's uh, within every 500 hour interval. So between 450 and 550 hours, you can do it through your dash. So what you're gonna do is you're going to come to the engine button, which is one, then you're gonna scroll down to where you see regeneration action and then you would hit select and then you'd go down to start and you would hit start. Um, the engine needs to be running and it needs to be up to temperature. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the temperature is because it doesn't specify in the book, it just says up to temperature. And uh, I ended up having to like work it a little bit because I, th I think it was like 170 degrees and I, I I don't know if it's the, the engine temperature they're talking about or the exhaust temperature but it was right about almost warm I think it was like 175 or something like that but it didn't really get much hotter I think it got to like 180 but I had to uh, dig into a pile a little bit to warm it up so just letting it idle might not be enough um, it might actually mean the uh, the DPF filter exhaust temperature also might have had to been warmer so anyway, so we got three filters we're going to change. Uh, we're going to change the primary fuel filter water separator, the secondary fuel filter or the final fuel filter, and um, the oil filter, which is right here. And we're going to change the oil. Um, with Volvo, if you use their approved oil, you can change your oil every 500 hours. Um, but if you don't use their approved oil and you use the regular CJ4 or better, then it's every 250 hours. So we stock, I think, CK4 or whatever, whatever the newer oil is. It's not synthetic. I'm assuming the Volvo oil is a synthetic oil. So we'll have to change it every 250 hours, which doesn't mean we do the regeneration every 250. We still do the regeneration every 500, but we'll change the oil every 250. Uh, you want to do the regeneration before your oil change is what they specify so um, yeah so that's that's what we're gonna do at the 500 hour interval um, I'll probably I'll probably take the air filter out and blow out the the, um, the primary air filter or the the first filter the bit the, the big the big uh, it's the, the, there's two of them in there. There's one in the center, and then there's one on the outside. The outside is a, a uh, has a, a larger micron rating, so it's you, you got a, a primary and a final air filter as well. So I'll probably just take a, an, an air nozzle and blow out the, the air filter a little bit. You're not supposed to have to change that till a thousand hours, I believe. But um, yeah, so this is what we're what we're doing now. All right, so this this uh, the setup that Volvo has on some of these loaders is actually pretty easy to change your oil. So you don't really have to. And there's a drain plug up here, but you don't need to get to the drain plug because they have 
these hoses, they're like the quick fitting hoses. And if I can loosen it, it's on there really tight. Oh, I got your pair of pliers. That's on there. All right, so. Yeah, so you got this cap on here. You gotta get this cap off. You get the cap off, and then you get this hose that they give you with this um, little end on it. It's got some O-rings and stuff in there. And uh, anyway, so it goes on here. And then you, you thread it in. And then oil starts coming out. So I believe this engine holds five gallons. Oh, I don't know if you can see when it's draining. Yeah, you can see the hose. So yeah, the hose is draining now. Yeah, so that's a pretty, pretty neat way of doing it. You don't have to worry about oil flinging all over the place. Um, they got a second one that's like kind of like an air hose. Uh, fitting and that's for the other one that's next to it I think that's for water or the coolant I don't, I don't recall I haven't really looked into it yet I just know that I've seen the other the other one but so that's that so once obviously once we're done draining take that back off and put the cap back on and then we're all done down here for um, Draining the oil. So, I guess I'll have to uh, see if these universal joints have grease fittings on them. They should. But they don't appear to. Unless they're in the caps. Huh. Either, uh, yeah, they're in the middle. Alright, so we have to. Use universal joints and uh, and then the uh, the yoke, not all oh, the, the slide section, the uh, telescoping section. So we'll go along, we'll grease the uh, universal joints. There's one there, we got one there. I thought that there was going to be a grease fitting for this section this the slip yoke section but uh i don't see one um there's a bunch of other filters and stuff too like you got one here i think that's the transmission filter um so then we will have uh, a universal joint there to grease um let's see all right that one see See the nipple right there? That's for the slip yoke in the drive shaft. We'll have to grease that. And then the universal joint there. Um, the carrier bearing has a grease fitting, so that's continually greased. And then we'll have to grease this universal joint. And then we should be done under here for the service. Um, so, yeah. Um, yep, and then uh, I'll, I'll grease all those, and then when I come back, we'll, we'll go up and do, uh, the filters. Alright, so I got all the, uh, got all the universal joints greased. Um, some, some loaders and equipment have a set of grease fittings that are on this, on this, uh, pin, on the shaft here. It runs through the rear axle because it's a three-point suspension and some of them have grease fittings 
that are either like on the caps here or they'll be on the housing here but you want to make sure that you look for those uh, see if you have them this this uh, this loader doesn't have any grease fittings there that I can see so I mean I looked over it pretty thoroughly I didn't see any if anyone else knows of where they might be if I missed them let me know but I like I said I don't think I missed them I looked pretty well I mean yeah so uh, once you're done draining oil you'll just take that hose off and then put the cap back on so a lot of these times these filters here I mean they tend to get a little messy come out so I, uh, I use a washer fluid jug I cut the top off and you can usually shove it down in there and orient it in any most places so you can if it drains it'll it'll drain into it and then I'm just not taking it off Sometimes you want to pay attention to how these filters come off. Like this one doesn't go, I mean, you might think that you got to put it on straight, but in actuality, this one's coming in at an angle. So you got to keep that in mind when you're putting these filters on and off. You might have a hard time getting it started if you don't pay attention as they come off, that it might not actually be heading on straight. It might be angled a little bit. And one, you don't want to cross thread it, and two, you don't want to sit here for an hour trying to thread it on either. This one seems all right. I think it was. Like some of these, you'll go to take them off and they'll just puke all over the place and it just kind of goes everywhere. All right, so the filter that was on here is uh, the Volvo one. It's uh, 216-40514 is the part number. And I am changing it with a Napa filter, which is 1820. Well, then, come over and we'll stick the filter back on. Oops. So it says, go until it touches and three quarters of a turn. So, touches. Okay, yeah, three quarters. Okay, so this engine holds, it says five gallons, including the filter. So, I think the filter probably holds about a quart and a half. So I put four gallons and two and a half quarts in. And check the oil here. That got us exactly to the top. So. Should be good. Yep. So, where do I need to be? Now, uh, I'll change out these two filters. Okay. So, take our, uh, 
jug here. The fuel filters tend to drain and sometimes they don't stop because they'll get like a siphon effect. And you never know if that's going to happen so you want to be ready for it if it does. See, this one's draining. I still spilt some even though I didn't get the thing. Running down my hand or weird. Yeah, it's not gonna stop. Oh, I guess it is. So here I'm running the book says to prime it with this, but this is a secondary filter, so I'm wondering how it expects you to fill the secondary filter. So that's why I'm thinking this little bolt on the side, usually got a little Little air, air bleeders on them. I think this is a bleeder, but I gotta look and see. slide when you're tightening. Now some people say you should fill the filters, some people say you shouldn't. Um, I, I personally don't fill the filters because the, um, the injection systems in these it's such high pressure and the nozzles are so fine that you might get a little piece of debris in there you're way better off just bleeding it correctly and not filling the filters because when you fill them unless you fill it on the outside ring where the holes are on the outside um then it's going to put dirt right in the right in where it's gonna go because these spin-on ones they the dirt goes the unfiltered set goes into the outside and then it goes through and then up the middle into the screw. At least most of them do. Like John Deere ones, they have like a, a straw that goes in and, and they, I think they get two different, uh, it comes in like two different levels through that same one straw. So it's a little bit weirder. But I personally, I don't fill them. I just bleed them out after. So I mean, it takes a lot more pumping to, to bleed it out right, but I, f I find you're way better off doing it that way that way you make sure you don't get anything in there and 
uh, you don't have any problems. So, let me get the primary water separator. Now this has got a water and fuel light on it. Um, so you got to unhook, unhook that. And then of course it's got this freaking connector here. Holding it on. Alright, so I can I can cut that zip tie and put another zip tie in. I think. Yeah. So we'll cut this guy. things screwed up because I pulled on it. We'll come down here. We got this twist connector down here. Which gave it no nothing no wrong. So, uh, I don't know if I can just drain this into here. I might siphon, so I might have a problem with that. But we can give it a try. Hmm. Maybe what it says. There we go. So, I'm going to put this down here. I don't usually like opening these things because sometimes they don't seal right afterwards. So we'll open that up. Keep turning this to break the air seal on top. And hopefully it'll all drain and it won't siphon it out. So what we need to do is we gotta take this uh, lower water or clear it's like a clear thing so you can see if there's water in there you gotta take this bottom cap off and put it on the new filter uh they have two different filters they have this open bottom one which has an o at the end it's uh it's another napa filter this one is uh six zero 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 seven eight the original is a one 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 zero six eight three uh so they have two different styles. They have this open bottom one where you put this cap on and then they have another one with just a drain in it. A little screw drain on the bottom of the filter. And you have to transfer the water and fuel light sensor from this to the next filter. So you just kind of keep changing the sensor throughout the filters. So I just got the same open bottom uh, one that's in that one. Uh, this is a reverse thread in there it, it threads into it so when you loop when you when you turn it counterclockwise it actually it, it, it works the same right tight left loose so you turn it to the right and it tightens it but it actually comes out instead of in so it, it's still the same 
same direction, it's just a different function. Like if it was a bolt, it would be going through the left hand thread. I don't really like this. Hmm. Well, had some crap in there, huh? you can tell but you see that stuff at the bottom that's like water in there or something in there I don't know what's in there but once I once I loosened it up and it got the vacuum came out of it actually the rest of that stuff came out so I mean it's probably water but that's what's kind of good about the cap as you can see you can see the water in there the water goes to the bottom because like you say oil floats on top so that's what it looks like when you got water in your in your fuel. So I can see it. But that I mean, like this this thing is still full of, of fuel, so you can see. But that's what it looks like when it's swimming around on there. So all right, so this came out of the filter. Now it's kind of like a kind of like a slug sludge thing. It may be. A uh, bacteria, like a microorganism, because they it does live in diesel fuels, um, and basically they get sucked into the filters and then they clog up filters. Uh, it usually happens when you have fuel sitting for long periods of time. Um, they sell biocides, I believe they call it, to to kill it and uh, get rid of it. Uh, so that might have been some of what's in there because that that like I said that's what came out of the top of the filter when I drained it out so we're definitely having an issue with that because that should not be in there um, so anyway moving on now you don't have to put this in a vise it just kind of makes it easier to hold I just kind of I mean I don't have the crap out of it because it just crush it but I'll do that and then I'll take the the filter wrench that goes with it and I'll put it just on the edge of this plastic piece so you can kind of get a good grip on it and then you can take it off Oops. and that's you have a screw Usually it's on pretty tight and it's kind of a pain to get them off. Plus you don't want to crack them and break them. <clears throat> yeah, it's on there pretty good. So you want to be careful not to grab it down here where you would crush and break this thing. I don't even know if you can still see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's unnecessarily tight. moving now yeah that's I mean obviously this is the first well maybe it's the second change I don't know but that's that's way tighter than it needs to be so yeah so I'm gonna clean this out there's a water and fuel sensor and stuff in there here's that and then here's your 
thing is some crap in there so yeah so i'll clean this out and then we'll transfer it over to the other one all right so you have a new o-ring that comes for this cap so you pull the o-ring off this cap place it in the box take the new o-ring put the new o-ring on the cap It's in the groove a little bit. Get some oil or fuel. I'll use some fuel. Uh, this filter here. And wipe it on the O-ring so it slides. It doesn't bind up. Take a new filter, which is about the same, and you just thread it on. Same way. Sure the sure the O-ring kind of goes on right and it doesn't kick out to the side or anything. And just crank it down hand tight. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do what they did with that one. I think it was ridiculous. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if they had to do that to get the sensor to line up or something, but I don't even think that would be necessary. It's it's kind of ridiculous how tight that was. Must have tightened up. What was this on there? I don't know. <clears throat> All right, so that's on, and uh, we'll go back over the loader and put it back on. So, take this and tighten it up. Tell that thing's gonna be problematic. It's got that bend in it. Well, it wants to be where it wants to be, but I don't know if it's tight enough. That's probably good, right? I don't need to be a hundred pounds on it. Plug this back in. Uh, let's see, I think I think this is a one-way deal. I know it just goes on the way, it's just getting it oriented right. They give you zero room to pull this bottom corner up. Yeah. 
So that spins, it's like it's it's got a plug, the plug goes in and you spin the collar, and then the collar will, so it plugs in and you spin the collar and locks into the bottom section. So I gotta get the zip tie, and zip tie that back up there, and then we'll bleed it. All right, so the way this looks like it works is, right there, you got two hoses side by side that come up, all right? So they both come from the fuel tank. Uh, what that one goes that goes to that's an oil that goes to the oil cooler all right so that's that's an oil cooler i imagine um so you got these two hoses that come up one comes to right there to that banjo fitting into the back of this filter housing which as you prime it that's where the primer ball right here i gotta get it out i can't do it with something in my hand anyway so there's the primer now it comes through this filter in out of this line and it follows this line up over here to a belt driven fuel pump see so that's a that's a fuel pump right there that uh is driven off the belt so that comes from there travels back around onto this green line here up and around up to there and then into this filter housing right down there and then it comes up through here and up into the fuel rail or well it looks like a fuel pressure sensor and then it goes into uh right there the fuel rails i think that's a fuel rail uh, it's 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 hard to tell what that what this block is because there's, there's a couple of wires or not wires but a couple of lines that go a few different directions so anyway this is that's the one where it comes in and then it goes there there's a sensor and it goes into the block and where are the injectors so the injectors are all right there in the side of the oh, obviously they're in the head they're all common rail so there's your injectors and there's your common rail tube let's see where it feeds the tube um it looks like it feeds the tube right right there unless there's another line which that's uh, injector, 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 injector. That's an injector. All right, so there's one that feeds a line. That guy right there with the clamp on it. Right there with the clamp on it. That guy feeds the line. And it comes right there in that block. Uh, I don't know if you can see this light's kind of bright. But that line that comes out of that block. Right, right there, straight up. That feeds it, and then I bet this is here's your return system. So yeah, so this line returns to the tank. So there's the return where that rubber hose is. Um, yeah, there might be two lines that feed it. There's another one back here, behind there that that might. Anyway, so I'm thinking is that I loosen up this screw here, and this is gonna be my bleed screw. So I'm not even gonna pay attention, because sometimes in the books, they have bleeding procedures, but they're only for like a single housing. They're not for uh, like a dual setup. Um, they said, I found that in a few of them. So they'll tell you to bleed it here, but in actuality, you gotta get air out all the way back over here, which isn't on this housing. So you'd end up just kind of pushing it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this nut or bolt and I'm going to pump this one until it fills this guy because this is this is not inside this felt the outside ring of the filter housing. This is in the center because I felt up in there and I could feel like like the way this uh, casting is right here. It feels the same on the inside so I can't feel the bolt. So this is on the center. So this is the... Uh, the filtered line so I'm gonna loosen that up and when I get fuel out of there I'll know it's full and then I'll pump it some more uh, with the over here until I build up pressure so let me go get a wrench for that all right so it's a 13 millimeter I'm guessing because everything in the world is a 13 millimeter so with the pump here you get you just push it in and turn it um, so that, that's how it is normal push it in and turn it like this and it pops out so Loosen this if we can. Oh, 
Oh wow, that's on there. Another one that's wicked on there. Everything's so tight. Oh, man, that feels good when you just slam your arms across stuff. Freaking awesome. Okay. Let's see. Got fuel pumping because it's filling up down here. Are we recording? Yep, yeah, we're recording. So you push it in, doesn't do anything. When you pull it out, it starts sucking. Probably why they said to push it 200 to 300 times. Which you think they'd get you some other type of pump instead of two to 300 pumps. Uh, I'm bleeding a little bit. It's, it doesn't pump so fast when you first start priming it like this until you get fuel into the pump. Once the fuel gets in the pump, then it starts pumping faster. It's just because you're using like a vacuum and it's not like a high vacuum thing. Yeah, so that hole goes into the center. I wonder if that's just a different way of kind of hooking it up. So instead of having this off the top, you could have it off the front. I don't know, either way I'm using it to bleed it, so. It'll probably work both ways. Here. Nope, I don't. Let me go get my jug. Oh, I don't want this maybe like that. I don't know. Basically, I'm just gonna go until some fuel starts coming out of there. And once it starts coming out, I'm gonna put the plug in and I'm gonna pump it a bunch more times. Hopefully, it'll pump it through some type of pressure regulator or something. There we go. That's why I'm double gloving it. Two different types. I got the rubber glove and I got the regular glove. All right. So your battery died there. I didn't get much farther. So anyway, so tightened up that nut. Um. So I tighten that back up um, and I continue pumping it. They say to pump it until it, until the plunger gets hard. So I'm going to pump it a couple more times. So it starts to get stiffen up. They say pump it till it's hard and then start it. And if it doesn't start within 30 seconds, start pumping it again until it, it does. 
Uh, you can't pump it while it's running. So I'll start it, and they said let it idle for five minutes to bleed any air out. So I ran it for about five, ten minutes to bleed the air out of it. You said you want to let it idle for about five minutes so it doesn't, so you can bleed the air out first. Um, of course, you want to check if you like your coolant up there. You want to check for leaks, uh, air pressure, all the normal um, maintenance things that are under the 500-hour range. I think you got a 50, a 100, and a 250. So do all the normal stuff. Um, I took the cover off of the air cleaner. I mean, you can see it's pretty dirty. So uh, I removed the filter. And, uh, I'm just gonna blow out the uh, blow out the filter. So because it's it's pretty dusty in there. Uh, you can do it a couple of times. I think I said five times before you should replace it. But I mean, you could probably do it longer. It's really up to you. I mean, really, if you took it out, you know how it goes back in, you just push it back in. Uh, the inside ones really don't need too much attention because you got the outside one. That's it. So, I guess the only thing left to do is to put the hood down, which is kind of an interesting way it works. It's a, it's a button inside this little door. 
Took me a little while to figure out how to put it down, but that's how you do it. I guess the only problems you have is when that mechanism breaks or you have no battery power. And then you're done. Close the door, latch it. Should be good to go for another 500 hours. Um, I gotta find out how to stop the service interval alert. Um, so I'll call Volvo and ask them how to do that. It might be in the book. I can look in the book too. Uh, I'll let you know how to do that if I if I find out. Okay, this is going to be how to reset your service engine light on your Volvo L90H. This is 2018. And we're at the 500 hour service interval. So I performed the service already. And this is how to reset it. So what you're going to do is you get your next service interval, service light. Come down here, hit your escape button to get out of that. So then you're gonna go to your service interval hold your button so it says go to service mode and you're going to come down here actually i might have went into service mode anyway so next service hit select scroll down to confirm service right there at the bottom hit select confirm service yes Hit select, and that should have confirmed the service. So, oh, maybe I gotta back out of it. Back in next service. Oh, it still says visit residing time. Let's go confirm service. Confirm service, yes. Escape. Now we'll hold, hold our service button to exit service mode. Next service, residing time, three hours. Okay, well, maybe you're gonna turn it off and turn it back on. I don't know. I figured that's what would have done it because it makes sense, right? The service interval light didn't come up, so I go into there, and select, is that in time, three hours. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. The message is nope. I don't know. So the message light ain't coming up anymore. But it's not saying that there's... Oh, you know what? I wonder if it's still going to say that there... Because it's on a 500 hour interval. I bet that's what it is. Cause this was coming up next service interval every time so i bet i bet what the what, what's going on is 
So there's three hours left on a 500 hour interval. Um, we're still at 394 hours or 494 hours. So I bet this is going to continue to count down to the 500 and then it will recount again. So I bet that counts 500 every time. So it'll probably reset itself at 500 and then say 500 hours. So it just counts down to 500 and then it starts over. I have to imagine that that's what it is because other than that, it doesn't quite make sense to me. But if there's anything different, then uh, I'll make another video about it because it is odd. Um, so yeah, I mean, in the next three hours, if, if something weird happens, then I'll I'll make another video. But I'm gonna go with the this. It, it it's confirmed the the service so it's just gonna do its 500 hour interval because I would I would have assumed that it would have reset that personally go to service mode so yeah I would have personally I would have assumed that that would have reset that three hours back to 500 and then counted down again Yep, uh, kind of weird, but I guess the light ain't gonna light up anymore. I guess that. All right. Well, hope this kind of helps somebody. It is a little weird to me, but all right. Thanks for watching.